What's up guys, it's Eli here with my man Ed Saul over at Metrolina Martial Arts and the video topic that we're talking about today is wrist locks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ed, you want to explain why you're good at wrist locks? Yeah, so uh, for those that are unawares, I am missing some fingers. I've got like a, a missing bone here. I was in an electrical accident when I was six. So I really despise people that have their full fingers and full mobility. So I just target everyone's wrists <laughs> at all times, nonstop. It's a bitter thing he needs to work out in therapy, but instead he just applies it to his jiu-jitsu game and he's become really adept at wrist locks. Because rolling with him is, is really <laughs> aggravating because it doesn't matter how good of a position I get on him. If I'm just kind of lazy, he'll just like throw this little wrist lock on me. I'm like, what the hell was that? Yeah. And it usually gets a reaction of this and sometimes that's all you need in jiu-jitsu. You just need like a little bit of space and that's gonna create your escape opportunity. So yeah. I thought we would talk about maybe some of um, your favorite places to hit wrist locks and some yeah. of my favorite places to hit wrist locks because I'm a respectable, polite person that doesn't typically use them but I do have an appreciation and awareness of them yeah. though. So anyway. I, I am not that, I <laughs> use them all the time. Now the thing that I, I, uh, I will give a quick caveat is I normally don't like launch onto these. Yeah. Because you can hurt your friends really easily, like just like with heel hooks or anything, but like these just, they, they have like a, that kind of pain. It is nasty and they can lead to injury pretty quick because there's small bones and small little joints and ligaments and stuff in there. And yeah. like this wrist of mine over here, that's about all the, the flexion I have on yeah. it and more from like repeated injuries and stuff. So yeah, so uh, just to kind of like give the nature really quick, a quick breakdown of what wrist locks kind of are. So there's generally a few different directions that wrist locks occur in. Right, so there is, I'll take this hand here, okay. um, where you have like the in traditional like uh, like Japanese style Jiu Jitsu or you know, we talk about an Aikido or whatever. It's like there's Kota Gaishi where mm -hmm. I'm taking essentially the pinky side over and rotating to the outside here, one mm -hmm. or two thumbs on the outside. There is the inversion of it, which would be Kota Milashi, right? Mm -hmm. Kota Milashi. And so that's where I'm taking it more spiraling down toward him. I'm trying to keep the elbow low so it creates the torque here. So it's that rotational radial kind of force. So there's the outward, there's the, the inward or downward like mm -hmm. that here. There's even like the twisting kind of version here. I would mm -hmm. call that Sankyo or Sankajo. Yeah, know. Sankyo so, and Aikido, right? Yeah, so, um, and then um, there's just kind of the basic like flexion in here like this where I'm just pushing the, the palm back toward the elbow or even this way here, which would, I, I don't know what you would call these in Japanese, but yeah. if you want to have a fancy name for it, then a lot of times they call it like mal de vaca in uh, Portuguese, it's oh. like cow hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is kind of weird. But um, anyway, so that's kind of basically the nature. You're looking to take it in an unnatural kind of direction that mm -hmm. causes, uh, eventually would cause a break or a tear in the ligaments of the, of the wrist, right? So um, where do these happen? Now, the wrist locks uh, are difficult standing especially from disconnected to get hold of them that they, they can work they absolutely can work you don't see them a whole lot however on the ground you have better positions and better platforms to be able to make these wrist locks work a lot of the time so mm -hmm. this is um we can look at these from different positions uh, yeah what are some that you like so uh the big one that i like is i actually when i have my back taken <laughs> so i'll have my back taken here and it doesn't matter whether it's the overhook or underhook side and a lot of times I like going towards the underhook side, which is sometimes where he wants to go as well. Um, but what I will do is I will keep my elbow and everything in tight and obviously do the things to not get choked. But, but I'll fall to the side here and then my objective is to get my weight of my body onto his arm. If it's not on his arm, then I can't do it. I can't isolate it and he can move it. So I'll put my weight down here. Now, once I'm here, I just pretend like I'm, I don't know how to get choked or not get choked and I'll pry it apart. And then right here is the touch. And it's all I generally do. Cause what I've done now is once I've gotten that, it normally gives me enough space to start to get out and escape. If he goes towards the choking side here, I do the same thing. I just use my neck and I'll put my neck down and pry it off and then touch here and do the same thing and launch out. <laughs> it's actually how I got my purple belt. I was testing and uh, I, I was rolling with another blue belt and I landed here and I went bang and I tapped him and he was very <laughs> upset. But I was very happy because I passed my test. Um, one that I like is from S mount, like so like okay. really high funneled up kind of S mount here. So um, once we get here and I've got this guy kind of funneled in this direction. Sometimes the guy can be very strong as far as like defending here like this, right? So 
all I need to do is cause some separation. And if I can cause separation to where I'm occupying the space and he can't occupy the space, then from there, I'm looking to like get a hold of this. The foundation, the base of his elbow against my body here like this, and then I'm gonna double up. And this is one way that where I can like actually initiate the wrist lock, but and I can catch it quick and squeeze it slow so that it's not that, that powerful of a, of a slam on mm -hmm. here like this. Now, I definitely could catch and slam it on, but that's, probably gonna result in immediate injury. So, you know, we gotta be kind of careful like that with our training partners. But this is one place that I really like to do it from here, is I like to get the grip on the elbow so that he can't grip his elbow, so that that immediately causes separation. I pull his elbow in tighter, and then now I pick this hand up and I'm pulling his hand toward me. It's a really nasty kind of wrist lock like If I'm on the bottom of like any position, honestly, <laughs> and it's really entertaining because a lot of times if he's being really oppressive and I like to get on my side, a lot of times I will get an under hook here I like to do underhook type things um, just based on what I like to do I guess but I will then pin the wrist here mm -hmm. and then I will bring him forward and put the weight down oh, on it that's awful. and yeah. normally it, that's not gonna get a tap normally because yeah. his whole body can move but what he'll do is he'll move that whole yeah. arm and yeah. now I can work to escape or do whatever yeah cuz like if this is really pinned in this direction yeah I can't get it out by just pulling it straight up or back right. I have to rotate my, my elbow in yes. to pull this way so I'm I'm having to create a lot of space so you're kind yeah. of seeing the theme like of Ed's seem like they are more about space makers than they are about actual submissions yeah but the, the added benefit to it is it makes me a little gun shy about being lazy with my hand placements as mm -hmm. well so I gotta be really on the, the watch for that mm -hmm. um, a place too where uh, I really like from inside the garden uh, from here right so this is a a good one for if you sometimes you get a guy who was is posting and he's not doing a very uh, good job right and I don't like to frame things like that because sometimes the guy will post here on the biceps right so when you get somebody posting here on the biceps like this now granted he's keeping me out of his collar he's keeping me from getting arm bars he's, he's he is kind of like limiting my mobility a little bit with my hips so those are some good things that he's doing but this is not a smart placement here on the bicep um, Having said that, you'll get plenty of people that do it. So I'm gonna go over and under. And so as I swim over here, I'm gonna grab here and I'm gonna tighten this up. I wanna flex my bicep. And then I wanna try to start taking my elbow toward, yeah, toward his belly button on that side. So essentially what's happening is I'm flexing the wrist and then spiral, okay. spiraling it in toward his belly. Yeah. And again, this, this is another one where, um, you know, it can be as nice or as mean as you want it to be. Like I can like, slam it on or I can kind of take it and squeeze so he pulls his hands back and now I have freedom to be able to get back in his collar and whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some that um, uh, translate a little bit better to standing, especially in the gi. And um, you can actually see some of these in, uh, in jiu-jitsu competition from like some old videos. They, they, they still exist, like there's still some, some nasty ones, but yeah. um, oh. right, if he makes the mistake of getting too low on this grip here, mm -hmm. then what I'm gonna look to do from here is I'm gonna kind of block on the elbow and I'm gonna karate chop in this way. So once I karate chop, this will flex, like if his hand is in the uh, vertical direction and flexing it, oh. yeah, like this here, right? Yeah. So now once I, I collapse that in, I still have the back of his hand against my body, yeah. but I'm grabbing here on the base and then from here now I'm gonna take my hand to the I'm gonna have my head to the outside I'm gonna double reinforce and then pull in so I've got this whole uh, compacting kind of feel oh, flex them back that. on that wrist oh yeah. that's great it's, it's I like really that. it's really awful yeah. so yeah if you get somebody that's doing that and you can fold that wrist in boom then you oh, can really hit that and this actually was one of the ways that I got my wrist hurt oh. somebody doing it to me so it's yeah, it's yeah. really good yeah. yeah so um if he's got uh, a good grip here like this yeah right now you can do this a couple different ways but generally what is going to happen is i'm going to have my gi out yeah you already know yeah so if like i'm going to get the end of my gi here like this in my hand and then i want to punch over this way and then duck under here yeah and Ooh. so Ooh. i shouldn't probably get all the way Ooh. through that's but good yeah but what's going <laughs> to happen is ducking through and then coming back up so now you can use this um, for a couple different reasons. So Ed will do it this time. Oh, right? thank you. So yeah, so he's gonna grab the end here and he's gonna punch that over. And as he punches the elbow and head through, he gets here. So if you can see right here, what's happening to my wrist, this is horrible, right? If he just stands up right now, like there's so much torque on my wrist and I'm stuck in there. That's the bad thing about it. Like we have to literally stop and try to unwind and unravel ourselves from it so i've seen that in competition where yeah. like they're like 
and the guy's like, ah! There's a couple viral videos that are yeah. floating around out there of a, a, a younger guy hitting yeah, on somebody. Younger guy and, and, and again, it's another one of those verbal taps where you just, yeah. you can't tap fast enough. Yeah. Now, the, the thing about that too, if you just really wanted to, you just really hated the guy. I mean, I don't know why else you would do this, but yeah. you just really don't like him and you, you've managed to get that. So we'll do it okay. on this side here, okay. right? Yeah. Um, you can use this not only to duck through to oh. here to try to get the wrist lock, but to go all the way in oh. the environment's here. Oh my God. Yeah. So you're breaking his wrist as, as you're dumping him on the head. These are some that really stick out in my mind about some really useful ones, right? Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, let me know what your favorite wrist locks are if you're a really horrible person out there watching this video. Like me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Ed. I appreciate thank you. you yeah. On those. And uh, yeah, go uh, wrist lock some white belts today. Yeah, appreciate for sure. you guys watching Night Jiu Jitsu channel and check out Ed over at Metrolina Martial Arts. Thank <laughs> you.